What's up everybody? I'm Miles Jury and in today's video I'm going to tell you exactly how much the UFC paid me to fight Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Let's get to it. In today's video we're going to be talking about exactly what I made for my fight with Cowboy Cerrone. We're going to stay on that same topic of what the numbers are behind the scenes and being very transparent with how much money a UFC fighter makes and what the business side is behind uh, MMA. In today's video, I'm going to tell you exactly how much money income I brought in from the UFC, how much money I made in sponsorships, how much money I had going out, but at the end of the day, how much money I brought in to keep for myself. Guys, before we get into the video, don't forget, smash that like button and subscribe. It helps out a lot with the channel. So let's get into it. So the year is 2015, and at this time in my career, I'm 6-0. I'm on a hot streak in the UFC, and I'm coming off of a big win over Japanese superstar Takanori Gomi, where I knocked him out in the first round. Donald Cowboy Cerrone, on the other hand, he's coming off a big win over former UFC champion Eddie Alvarez. Coming off that, that win over Gomi, it was I was kind of in a weird position where my contract was at. I was under an Ultimate Fighter contract since I, I started my career with the UFC on the Ultimate Fighter 15. Shout out the Ultimate Fighter 15, best season ever. First season live on FX. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's where my contract started. And what happens when you're under an Ultimate Fighter contract is your pay goes up yearly. So it doesn't go up like a standard UFC contract. It goes up each fight if you win. It goes up financially each each win. So for like example, if if I'm under a standard UFC contract, I'm at ten thousand to show, ten thousand to win. And if I win, basically I go up to thirteen thousand to show, thirteen thousand extra if I win. If you're confused about you know the show and the win, check out my video on how much I made in my first UFC fight because I explain it explain it there. Um, but I, this is the contract I, I was under was Ultimate Fighter. Basically, it went up. Didn't matter if I won, it, it only went up per year. So when I won two three fights in 2013, my pay stayed the same. It didn't go up until 2014. So going into that Gomi fight, I literally was at 10,000 to show and 10,000 to win. And when I knocked out Takanori Gomi, I got a call from Dana White personally, and he, and he basically said, "Hey man, awesome performance. That was that was sick. You went, you know, went over to and defeated Gomi. We want to get you out of that Ultimate Fighter contract." And his exact words were, "We're gonna tear up that contract and we're gonna give you a new contract." And at this moment, I was like, "Heck yeah! Like this is literally what I've been waiting for." It reminded me of a moment where it was like hard work and perfect timing kind of coming together. And here I got the, the president of the UFC calling me, congratulating me, kind of like, you know, acknowledging my hard work and acknowledging my accomplishments. And this had never really happened before. So it was a beautiful moment in time. I was, I was ecstatic. I really felt like financially I was taking that next step and... And Dana just said, hey, we're going to tear up that old contract. We're going to give you a new contract. And uh, it's going to start with this fight with Donald Cowboy Cerrone. And we're scheduled to meet on UFC 182 as the co-main event. Now, this is a huge pay-per-view card. This is headlined by John Jones and Daniel Cormier. It's an awesome card because from what I've read on it, it was one of the biggest pay-per-view cards for the UFC in a while. It did somewhere between 780 to 820,000 pay-per-view buys alone. And this was brought on a lot by the feud between John Jones and Daniel Cormier, how much they hated each other. This feud with Daniel Cormier and John Jones, this was 100% authentic. You know, it all started at that infamous press conference where Daniel Cormier and Jones, they were kind of squared up and... For whatever reason, Cormier just flipped out, pushed uh, John Jones, and man, John Jones just kind of came back swinging on him, and that's when that whole like drama show happened. All the officials jumped in, tried breaking these two up, and 
it was just madness from them. I mean, immediately after that, they were doing interviews and were, were calling each other all kinds of names and just genuinely didn't like each other. And I even remember uh, after you weigh in, these like after you weigh in, these guys were going at it. So after the weigh-ins at the fight, what happens is the Dana White calls for a meeting for all the fighters, and he has no no coaches, no cornermen, no press, nothing like that. He has uh, all the fighters go in a room, and he comes in, him and uh, Sean Shelby. And usually, what happens is uh, they they talk about the event, they uh, they let everybody know about the bonuses, how much the bonuses are going to be. And uh, they, they give their thoughts on, on how awesome of a fight card it is. And at this pre-fighter meeting, all of us fighters in the back room, John Jones and Cormier are still going at it. They're, uh, Jones is like sitting in the back, Cormier is to the right, and, and man, Jones is over there like, you saw Cormier, and, and Cormier is like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whoop your butt tomorrow. And I, I'm kind of keeping it like in uh, good terms here, but, but they were just like, cursing like crazy at each other and calling each other every name in the book. And you could just really tell these guys really didn't like each other. These guys really wanted to get at each other's throats and it was evident in that fighters meeting. I mean, even even Dana had to kind of like say, hey, guys, like, chill out with the fights tomorrow. You guys are going to be fighting within 24 hours. Like, chill out a little bit. Let's get through this meeting. And and, it, and it, it was funny. It, like, I remember sit, sitting in the back and just kind of giggling and laughing like, oh, man, like, boys, we're fighting tomorrow anyways. Like, you know, is it necessary to sit here and just keep calling each other every name underneath the book? Like, we're going to scrap tomorrow. And uh, But that was them. You know, that that was them. They, they really did not like each other. Needless to say, this was a huge fight. And leading up to the fight, I trained hard for it. I spent probably 10 weeks in San Diego at Alliance MMA, just locking myself up again. I was doing wrestling, jiu-jitsu. I brought in sparring partners to, to mimic uh, Donald Cowboy Cerrone. I was bringing in guys from Vegas and guys from Iowa just to get the best look that I could for this fight. I, uh, I was making sure I was eating clean, and I, and I was just putting the right preparation in this fight because for me, it was a, a huge fight for me because I know with a win over Donald Cerrone, that puts me in line for a title shot. And let's Let's be real, that's the number one reason why I was in the UFC. I wanted to compete against the best fighters in the world, and that's why I was fighting with somebody like Donald Cerrone, because I wanted to get to that championship fight. I wanted to, to win that belt. Unfortunately, the night wasn't mine. I ended up losing a decision, and you know I, I could go into length about you know what happened and my thoughts on the fight and everything, but... For time's sake, we're just going to say it wasn't my night and Donald Cerrone had a great performance and it was his night. So let's get into the numbers. For this fight with Donald Cerrone, I was handed a check for $16,000. The UFC also about a month later, they sent me a locker room bonus for $3,000. So total all in from the UFC, I had an income of $19,000. So let's talk about the expenses that came up for this fight. I had a gym fee, which was 10%, and that came up to $1,600. I had a management fee that was 20%, and that came up to $3,200. And also, too, I had some training and some miscellaneous fees, which, you know, were massages, body work, medicals, the, the usual things that come up before a fight. And that came out to right around $2,000. So total all in, I had expenses of about $6,800. So total from the UFC, I made $12,200. At this time, as UFC fighters, we were all still allowed to have sponsors. And going into this fight, I made roughly right around $25,000 in sponsorships. Now, I had to pay 20% to my management, so that was about $5,000. And so the total I took home from sponsors was $20,000. An additional $600 came in after the fight. So my total income was $32,800. This is basically how much money I took home net after paying the gym, paying management, paying all the miscellaneous fees. $32,000 and $800 is what I had. Now, let's not forget, we gotta pay our taxes. 
My taxes came out in this fight to about $6,500 and that left me with right around $26,300 that I took home, I had to keep. I got to keep after paying Uncle Sam and everybody else. So that's good money, right? I mean, $26,300 is, is good money. Now basically what I did with that is, you know, what I usually do is I just save as much as I can and I live off of just enough to, to get me until that next fight. And that's basically been my strategy with the money that I've made from the UFC is I basically save as much as I can and invest it and then live off the most the, the least that I can to, to live off of until my next fight. You know, pay for rent, pay for my, my training fees, all that. Um, so $26,300, it wasn't enough obviously to retire or do anything crazy with, but it was enough to get me to my next fight. And most importantly to me, was getting that that title shot that's that that was the main motivation the main opportunity for this fight so i have no regrets about it and it was a great experience and i wouldn't take it back for nothing so guys let's make sure we smash that like button and you subscribe we're gonna keep kicking out great content for you guys until next time